You probably noticed that when writing Windows applications in C, even if you write very simple applications, the executable sizes are quite large. And in this video, we're gonna look into why is that? And also, we're gonna look into a trick to make the executables very small. So for this, we're gonna use the x64 native tools command prompt. This comes with the Visual Studio build tools. And let's go ahead and navigate to my working directory. I'm gonna open a new file here. Let's call it test.c, for example. And we're gonna have just an empty main entry point. So we have just the main function here with nothing inside in the body. Now let's go ahead and save this. And I'm gonna start by just compiling this regularly. So I'm gonna use CL. This is the Visual Studio compiler. And this also runs the linker by default. Now I'm gonna pass in the C file. And we can see here that the linker has produced test.exe. So let's take a look at the size of this file. And as we can see over here, it's 112 kilobytes. That's quite large for an executable that we didn't do anything inside. So let's take a look at why is it that large. So for this, I'm gonna hold on shift and right click. And I'm gonna use here copy as path. And I'm gonna open a program here called Cutter. This is a reverse engineering program that you can get for free. It's open source and cross-platform. And I'm gonna put information on the description on how you can get it with the WinGet package manager. Over here, I'm gonna paste the executable path that we just copied. Remove the quotation marks. Now I'm gonna press on open over here. And I'm gonna press on okay. Now it's gonna analyze the file. And as we can see over here, we have a couple of tabs here at the bottom. First tab is called dashboard. We have here general information like the bitness of the executable and the size. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph tab over here. So I'm gonna click on graph. And here we have the main entry point of the executable. We can see that even though we wrote nothing in the entry point, it actually has quite a lot going on over here. And the reason for this is that the C library has its own default entry point that is put in by default when you build the C code. And what is going on over here is that it's initializing all kinds of stuff that are necessary for the various C library calls. And if we just go ahead here to the bottom, eventually we'll find the call for our actual entry point. So let's just go ahead here. This is just the disassembly. So we're gonna see here a bunch of assembly instructions. And here we have the call for our actual main function that we just defined. And if I just double click on this, here we can see our very slim entry point that we wrote in our code that all it does is just zeros the EAX register with XOR. So it's XORing EAX with itself. And then it's using the return instruction. So this basically returns zero. Also, if I go here to the imports tab, you can see that it's making a lot of imports to various functions from the kernel 32 DLL. And let's go ahead and just learn how to make everything here much more minimalist. Let's go back to the native tools command prompt. And this time, instead of just running CL regularly, I'm gonna pass in a special flag that is gonna be the link flag. So this will let me pass in parameters for the linker. And then I'm gonna pass the parameter that is entry. And I'm gonna tell it that my entry point is gonna be main. This will tell the linker that I don't want to use the default C library entry point. I want the entry point to be my main function. So the function I define, which does nothing currently. Now, if we take a look at the size, much smaller. Now it's just two kilobytes. Now notice that because we're not using the C library entry point anymore, all the initialization code of the C library is not going to happen. So in case you decide to write the code like this, you should rely on the Windows API instead of relying on C library functions. Now let's go ahead and make the program do something a little more useful than nothing. So for this, I'm gonna use the message box function. This comes from the Windows API. Notice I'm gonna use the W version. This means that I'm gonna use the wide character version. Wide character enables us to use international languages and not having the restriction of only using ASCII characters. And we can see that this basically displays a model dialog box. We can just specify a custom message in this parameter. Here, I'm gonna add the call for message box. First parameter can be null. So we're not gonna have any owner window. Second parameter is the text to be displayed. Notice that because I'm using the wide character version, I need to proceed my strings with the L character, capital L, and that's gonna make a wide character string and not a regular string. Now let's just say hello from small executable. Caption can be null. And finally, the type can be MBOK. That's just gonna be a regular default message box. 
Now let's go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and run CL again with the special flag here of the entry point being main. Forgot to include windows.h. Fix that. Also another important thing is that we're gonna go here to the documentation of the message box function. And here I'm gonna click on requirements. And notice that we need to pass in the library, user32.lib, to get access to this function. So I'm gonna copy this. And I'm gonna add this after the test.c file. I'm gonna add user32.lib. Okay, now everything is working nicely. Let's go ahead and run test.exe. And as we can see, we have a dialog box coming from the executable. Also, let's take a look again with Cutter on this new executable. Taking a look here at the graph, we see that it's much simpler. We don't have any arrows going on. It's just a single entry point. And if you take a closer look, all it's doing is just calling message box. It's initializing the parameters over here. And then it's finally calling message box. And, the, and then it's done. Taking a look at the imports, there's only a single import, and that is for the message box w function. And also if we take a look here at strings, we can see here the hello from small executable string. So that's the string that we're writing in the message box. And also notice another thing. Here's another bonus fact before finishing off the video. Every executable has this string. Notice this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Now, why is that? Apparently the format of executables on Windows is actually compatible with the DOS format. And if we just go ahead and run this executable or any other Windows executable in DOS, we're gonna see this message. And let's go ahead and demonstrate this. So I'm gonna close Cutter here for a sec, and I'm gonna open a program that is called DOSBox. Let's go ahead and mount the C directory. So I'm gonna use the mount command. And I'm gonna say that I'm gonna mount on the C directory. That's gonna be the C directory inside of DOSBox. And I'm gonna mount my working directory on my host machine with the code. Now I'm just gonna to move to the C drive. I'm gonna run here dir. And let's go ahead and run test.exe. And here you can see the string that we saw in the reverse engineering. This program cannot be run in dust mode. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.